Sometimes you just need to blow off some steam, and The Spy Who Shot Me by Retro Army Limited had me covered, on steam no less. This brief but enjoyable romp reminds us of the best things you will remember about GoldenEye and Time Splitters and other similar franchises. Lighthearted humor, surprisingly decent gunplay, and horrendous checkpoints. Let's get stuck into why this one is worth a couple brief but eventful hours of your life. Let's hope Six's intel was correct. We we'll never know with him. Who the hell are you? Name's Seven. Agent Seven. Security! Security! The Spy Who Shot Me is an obvious Bond parody and stars Agent Seven. He's a haughty, wise-cracking type, kind of like Archer, and he's an utter joy to watch, as are the likable and much more PG versions of Bond standbys. Try not to shoot up the office, Mr. Seven. Your superior is a man called Mother, for some reason. Doing a spot of redecorating, sir. My paintings have a nasty habit of attracting bullet holes. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that. I wouldn't know, sir. Lots, perhaps. Your co-worker, Agent Six, often supplements you in the field, but usually ends up using ridiculous gender-bending costumes to blend in. Or Showing your feminine side, Six. This is no time for a joke, Seven. Or winds up getting captured and has to be freed by you. Seeing where and how he'll pop up is a fun little running gag. No crazy inventions today, Smithers. We're still repairing your last escapade. Seven has a playfully antagonistic relationship with Smithers, his gadget man, who will provide you with random upgrades like spring shoes to help you jump or a shoe phone. Damn Smithers on his shoe phone. Even the Bond baby you meet is treated with care, as instead of being used just for eye candy, she speaks with Seven seductively about the possibility of... Think of a better use of our time. Oh, darling, you're just too good! Checkmate. And now I really must go. And she pops up in subsequent levels just to say something quirky. Meow! I'm deaf. I had a smile the whole time I played, and when the game pushes your skills a bit with its difficulty, this light tone will definitely help allay any gamer rage you might otherwise be simmering with. Our story setup is one that allows for all of the good tropes you've seen in countless spy flicks. And here we had the forces of MI-69, because... Giggity, giggity. Battling the villainy of Scum, who, as Agent Seven says, They all look alike. There's a simple story here that takes you all over the world in a variety of shootouts and vehicle sections, and there's a fun little twist at the very end. Because the game is only a couple of hours long, I'll leave the story for you to experience firsthand, so let's go ahead and get straight into the gameplay and level design. The gunplay initially has a loose, kind of cartoony feel of a light gun shooter, or golden eye time splitters, but the more I played, the more I was impressed with the sound effects and the feedback. While there's not really any stealth beyond the first person you whack in an area before, you know, that alerts the rest of the horde, the pistol silencer sounds so cool and secret agent-y, you'll just want to equip it over the standard pew pew mode, and the shotgun just slaps. Oh, that chunky sound effect. Overall, you're a lot more of a hitman here than a stealthy spy, but that's okay because the guns feel good to shoot, and there's a decent variety of them. They're almost quake-like in their effects and the feedback that they generate. Your enemies aren't particularly interesting to fight, as they sort of pop up like haunted house creatures with a beavis and butthead. <laughs> yeah. Every time they see you and have a nasty habit of firing around corners or through geometry if you're near a doorway, but that's fine since the game is more interested in you being precise with your shots and overcoming big brain AI. Graphically, you're getting a retro-styled N64 or PS1 pointy polygonal aesthetic that captures the nostalgia of days gone by, but also looks polished and modern. The levels themselves repeat many assets, as you might expect from a small developer, but also from one who's trying to replicate the look of old-school games. Locations include classic spy locations like a swanky remote hotel, a boat in a harbor that you must infiltrate, underground bases, and an ice level you've seen in so many Bond games, or even in a classic N64 title like Shadows of the Empire, which we'll be reviewing here one day as it's an old favorite of mine. I get this bomb out, huh? 
The spy who shot me has an interesting but sort of strange traversal mechanic in that you'll be going about your business exploring the level and you'll often run into these blocked off areas that have a 7 logo in front of them and you'll have to go and explore any of the other winding side paths to retrieve a 7 token that will unlock the area for you so you can backtrack and then move forward. It doesn't make any real world sense, but it does compel exploration of the whole space. It's still fairly linear overall, but that's fine since the game is about shooting first and foremost and about getting as many headshots as you can or trying to use the power of the shotgun or the bolt action rifle to get double kills and things of that nature. That being said, waving a gun around isn't all you do. Several vignettes let you take control of a speedboat, ski down slopes, or take part in mandatory timed obstacle courses. These are a little janky, especially the speedboat section that requires you to dodge mines, but also not run aground where you'll get stuck and take inexplicable friction damage before blowing up and having to restart the whole thing. This is the only section where the controls and the general length of the section with no saves became a bit tiresome, but it wasn't too bad. And on that note, I should mention that levels often have very dubious checkpoints. Some short levels, some short levels, some short, oh my god. <laughs> Some short levels have a midpoint checkpoint, and some have none, and not all sections save your progress when it's finished, even if they display a mission briefing screen about your clear time or how many side objectives you completed like blowing up computers or rescuing civilians. Can everyone carry guns on planes? You can quit out too early and come back to realize that you must replay several sections again to get to a hub point where the game saves your progress. Generally, I didn't stop unless I solved this repeated cutscene. But even this isn't always there to signpost progress, so it's a bit of a crapshoot. This shouldn't come up a ton, as the game is short enough you'll probably beat it in several sittings, but if some of the tougher sections are wearing you out and you wanted a break, it can be pretty frustrating to come back and realize you inadvertently quit sooner than the game liked and have to replace several sections to get back to the frustrating part. I think you got the point. It is to the game's credit, though, that when it does push you outside your comfort zone, that the gameplay is fun enough and speedrunnable enough that I kept persevering through some tough sections till I got through and felt pretty satisfied that I figured out the trick or mastered the weird vehicle controls. I think I've reached my peak. So that's The Spy Who Shot Me. It's short, it's sweet, and very charming. The gunplay is surprisingly decent, the levels and the character models are nostalgically rendered and pleasing to look at, the voice acting and the humor is just great fun, and honestly, it's just nice to play something that doesn't lean on good memories to be fun. I don't see what the fuss is about. Ah, secret agent coming through. I never owned an N64 or a PlayStation growing up, but I do remember GoldenEye multiplayer with my cousins and friends, cluelessly wandering around icy levels, dying over and over again to whoever got odd job first. And the fact that this game faithfully recaptured a one-off 20 plus year old memory that I have is quite a feat, and I think you'll get a kick out of it too. Go ahead and check it out. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. I'm afraid we'll have to finish our game later. But darling, do you have to go?